Okay, this next project is going to be a disk on chip uh, project. So if you watch some of my other videos, you might have noticed I like uh, working on old storage devices and retro computers. So I previously I built uh, compact flash boards. I even designed my own uh, board uh, for flash uh, drive using uh, old 39 SF040 uh, flash chips. Using this board, you could get up to a uh, four megabyte flash disk. Kind of did this as a retro project described in one of my uh, other videos. I actually described the half as big board that only had four chips and only did two megabytes. But this time I'm going to try something else different. Uh, there was this disk on chip uh, which M Systems made. I think it was during the 90s and the 2000s that these were popular. And this was a flash drive on an IC. Let me get one. I actually bought some of them off eBay. Um, so there's one of them. Uh, this looks like just a normal old 32 pin uh, IC. But what it's going to do is it's going to implement a, uh, a flash file system and a flash drive. So that particular chip was an MD2800 series, a, an 8 megabyte flash drive on it. So let's take a look at what this M Systems disk on chip is. There's several different ones you can buy. Um, this one had an 8 mega, megabyte capacity. There's These things were quite popular in embedded systems because you'd have your system boot up off the disk in a chip. It wouldn't be like compact flash that was customer removable. It'd be all fixed and your embedded system would boot up run off that disk and chip and then you could run uh, you know whatever Windows or DOS software your embedded system would run. I'll link the data sheet. Um, this here is showing the pins. Uh, this thing looks a lot like a memory device. It's got address lines, data lines, and a chip select. We'll get into a schematic in a moment. It has an 8 kilobyte uh, memory window um, which when you're using something like an ISA computer it's nice to only use up 8 kilobytes of RAM because RAM was uh, pretty precious back then. So what it's going to have is a built-in memory mapping system uh, to map the 8 megabytes of flash into 8 kilobytes of window. So if we look at the block diagram, so the it has a boot block which is able to make this thing function as a BIOS extension, so it'll answer the, the BIOS extension query from the BIOS, it'll boot itself up, it'll install its driver for to make itself look like a hard drive and then it can even boot off of the flash so that's got a boot ROM it's got error correction built in I think this thing actually does wear leveling um, and then it's got a flash controller and flash so this flash controller is going to do the mapping of the 8 megabytes of flash into the um, 8 kilobytes of space and you can see over here the interface is really simple I mean it's got a chip enable a write enable an output enable, eight data lines, and 13 address lines. Um, simple enough, this thing will be almost trivial to uh, interface to our computer. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic. Um, I've got quite a bit going on here, but not all of it is really important. Um, over here, so over here is the ISA bus. You know, this is our traditional uh, connector for the ISA bus. I like on my boards to bring that out to a header in case I want to do any diagnostics. Um, easy to hook leads up to a header. Um, then down here is our all of the disk on chip stuff. Uh, so we've got the disk on chip itself. Um, as I mentioned before, the basics here are eight data lines, 13 address lines, a chip select, a write and a read enable, um, the read and writes, they just go to the MEMR and uh, MEMW signals on the ISA bus. Um, so that leaves us to implement a simple um, address decoder. So I used a 74HCT688. And basically what it does is it has two 8-bit sets of inputs. Um, and it outputs the chip select if they match. So you take uh, eight of them and hook them up to a dip switch. And then you take, uh, we had seven left. Um, that hook up to the upper address bits. So that will let us put um, the disk on chip on any 8 kilobyte memory address in the 1 megabyte address space of the IBM PC. Uh, it only took uh, 7 bits to do that, so I hooked one of these uh, other inputs to ground, and that lets us use the um, last switch here as an enable. So we can actually have a switch where we can 
by flipping the dip switch, um, disable the disk on chip entirely. And that'll turn out to be handy um, if we want to boot up with the disk on chip disabled because we don't want to run its bootloader. Now you might ask, what is all this other junk on here? Um, and that's just because I had lots of extra space on the board. So I added, because it's handy, a real-time clock. The DS12885, very popular real-time clock for PC, I think maybe it came out with a PCAT. All of this, of course, is completely separate from the disk on chip, just had additional room on the board, so I added it to the board. So real-time clock, and there's some address decoding stuff for the real-time clock. It's put on an I.O. port. This real-time clock doesn't interface real well with x 86 It's got like an address, and it was intended to have like an address latch and a data latch. So there's some additional decoding for that. Um, when you write to one port, you'll write into the address latch. When you read or write the other port, you'll read um, the data. So there's a 74 HTT 139 here and a hex inverter that does that. Um, there is like an interrupt output. I ran that out to um, hex inverter and put a jumper in. In case you did want to use the RTC interrupt, you could hook it up to one of the PC's interrupts. Um, yeah, we'll try out the real-time clock at the very end of the video. So yeah, the real-time clock is all of this stuff up here. It's an RTC address decode. Um, so that's about it. Let's uh, let's take a look at the board that I made. So here's a completed adapter. I've installed a disk on chip here. I think this is an eight megabyte disk on chip. Um, bought this off eBay. It's almost certainly used. It probably has data on it of some sort. It may even boot. We'll find out in a moment. So over here is the address select logic for the disk on chip. Um, when I designed this for whatever reason, I put the uh, real-time clock calendars address select over here. Goes with the real-time clock, and I put the disk on chip select over here. Goes with the disk on chip. Maybe I had a layout reason for that. I don't recall, but anyway, it's set by this uh, dip switch. Um, I currently have it set to uh, do the disk on chip at E000 uh, that segment. This first switch you can use to turn the disk on chip on and off. Um, if it's all the way down, um, it'll be uh, enabled. If you flip the switch up it will disable the disk on chip. I've also populated the uh, real-time clock and I've set its address, I forget what it's set to, but it's, it's set to whatever the standard was for the PCAT via this uh, block over here. Uh, so let's plug this in, try it out, see if it'll boot up. So we'll take and we'll plug it into this unused slot over here. Uh, so this is my standard uh, backplane based um, retro x86 build. Um, so this uses the Micro 8088 that Sergey Kislev designed. It's also got uh, Sergey's VGA card and Sergey's floppy controller and over here is Sergey's um, compact flash adapter. Now I modified the compact flash adapter so I can have a switch and I can turn it on and off. That's this switch over here on the front of my case. The handy thing about that is if you want to experiment with uh, Alternate storage devices, you know, um, often it's nice to be able just to disconnect um, your primary storage because I don't want to boot off the compact flash. I want to boot off that disk on chip. I've also got a floppy drive over here. I've got the floppy ejected. Uh, let's try to boot it up, see what happens. Okay, I'm going to turn the power on. It's booting up. Skip the RAM check. Uh, there, it found the BIOS extension E0000. That's where we put the disk on chip. Um, copyright 1992-1996 M systems. Um, but it's just sitting here. Um, I've actually tried this a few times before. Um, it just sits here forever. It doesn't do anything. Um, even if I insert my floppy and boot up again. Um, we're booting up again and it's just gonna sit here so 
Well, there, this time it actually rebooted itself. Let's try that again. But it's, it's not accessing the floppies. It's just going into a reboot loop. Something's wrong. So what I suspect is going on, that these, uh, these disk on chips, the life cycle, these went well into the uh, 286, 386, 486 era, you know, where there were 32-bit uh, machines. I have to wonder if maybe this thing, with a bootloader that's programmed to use newer instruction set, I mean, maybe it's set up to use a 32-bit and uh, running 32-bit instructions and our old 8-bit um, 80, 88 is just uh, not able to cope with that. So what I'm going to try to do is to change the uh, bootloader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that first dip switch up that will disable the disk on chip so it won't be interfering with our boot process. I'm going to enable my um, compact flash boot. Um, compact flash boot, I've already installed some disk on chip utilities. Um, let's try to give this a shot now. So we shouldn't see the BIOS since it's uh, disabled. But we will see the compact flash BIOS, so there's our XTI IDE, compact flash, compact flash card is up. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in, I'm not going to show you this because I'd have to move the camera, but I'm going to reach in in that same dip switch that I toggled off on my disk on chip board. I'm going to toggle it back on. So now the disk on chip is back in circuit. It's dressable, but we didn't boot with it, so it didn't lock up our machine. So we can go into some tools that I have here. Version 4.2.0 is the one I'm going to try. Um, we need to go into the 8086 directory. And now if we run, we look in here, um, there's still a D update. Let's try running it. There it tells us the arguments. D update win E000. And it still wants an S parameter. And let's tell it doc 42.086. So this should reflash the firmware on the uh, disk on chip um, with the newer version without erasing the data. Let's see what happens. Doing stuff. Okay, writing boot image, boot image replaced successfully. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down. I want to boot off floppy. Um, I'm going to turn I'm going to turn my compact flash off so that um, it will recognize the disk on chip. It'll load the BIOS and driver and stuff. But then it's going to boot off my floppy disk. I'm doing I'm doing that because I don't know exactly what's installed on this disk on chip. I don't want it to start running some weird code in the boot that messes with something. So let's just boot off floppy. Yeah, we'll see if the bootloader's working this time. And then we can poke around on the disk on chip and see what's there. Okay, there. See, now we loaded true FFS BIOS. That's what we couldn't get done before. Um, Floppy, it's working, booting off the floppy. And if we look, we should have a C drive. Yeah, we do have a C drive. And it does have stuff on it. It's called Disk on Chip. Um, it appears to have a DOS um, installed. I don't know what version of DOS. It's from 1994, perhaps. See what's in the type auto exec. Uh, so it's got something here. It's got some paths, it's got some temporary directories. 
TCP, so it's got some kind of TCP stack. Um, it's got an Ethernet driver, CCU main. I don't know what any of that does. Let's look in this. Now, what is st.bat? It's another batch file does something here. That one looks like it copies something to the D drive and runs it. Um, so let's look in this CCU directory. And I should mention that you know if we encountered personal data or corporate data or anything um, that looked like someone wouldn't want to share, we would uh, get rid of it. Um, but here, let's just poke around and try to figure out what's um, what's in here. So it's got something called. Um, CCU main and CCU 296 a hex file that goes with it um, maybe it has something to do with some embedded system um, there's PC TCP that I would guess is more Ethernet TCP stack stuff HiMem.sys DOS 4GW that I think is DOS memory management stuff uh, we've got scan disk let's see Type. Can we let a colon more? Let's see what that CCU main does. Um, yeah, so it needed protected mode. We don't have that. So we might have to load up debug or something to try to figure out what CCU main actually, what program that is. DOS, oh, let's go. Debug CCU main.exe. Let's see if we're looking at the data segment. Watcom C. So it's got, you know, it's compiled with Watcom, whatever this is. I don't know if we're going to learn a whole lot more about it. No, this is just the Watcom uh, runtime library. But let's try pulling out the floppy. Um, ejected and then we'll reboot it and we'll see um, see what happens when we actually boot off of it oops I don't have my reboot hooked up there we go booting up so it's uh, found the extension loaded the file system driver it's trying to access the floppy it's going to learn the floppy isn't there and then it's going to boot up off the disk on chip. Starting MS DOS, so it was some version of DOS. We kind of figured that as much. Uh, Windows XMS driver, so yeah. Obviously, we don't have uh, the kind of memory stuff this thing's looking for. The packet driver. Um, there is no ISA PNP card, that's not surprising. Um, can't start PC TCP um, and then it's upset we just ran into that CCU main thing that's upset about not having uh, um, a 386 or 486 so um, whatever this thing did uh, maybe it'll remain a mystery to us maybe we can at least see what version of DOS we're running so yeah it came with DOS 6.22 Okay, so all of this crusty old stuff really isn't of use to us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot. I put the floppy back in the drive. Uh, we'll boot off the floppy, and then we'll just format the thing and install our own DOS on it. So here we're booting off the floppy. The floppy lights lit. Take it a few seconds to boot, and we can do good old format c colon slash s.
Uh, yeah, well, let's erase it all. Okay, it has finished formatting. Uh, drive C, now empty, and then uh, cop. Let's make their C colon slash DOS. Then we'll just copy everything off of our DOS floppy. Okay, all set up. Going to eject the floppy. And whoops, and reboot. It's kind of slow, um, but there it is. It's booted. There's the DOS I installed. DOS directory. Everything is in there. Good old check disk. Eight megabytes of space and about seven megabytes free. So for the last thing I'm going to do is I've copied my Nixie Tube clock program over um, to the disk on chip. Uh, so let's cd slash nixclock.exe. And this is going to let us try out the real-time clock that I also located on the very same PC board. And there we go. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.